Hey everybody in Atlanta Nation, thank you for uh, being patient with us on that Facebook Live video. I think we figured it out. I'm here with uh, Dr. Andre Ferreira and uh, we are both Invisalign faculty and we have the new uh, Invisalign pitch deck for updates to ClinCheck 5.7, a few other things. And we're trying this out on Facebook. Uh, so thank you, Andre. You want to take over from here? Th thank you. Yeah, I kind of almost forgot that I'm controlling the slide deck now. So the uh, the, the the index, the the, the new uh, deck consists of uh, some changes in the ClinCheck clean check software, Invisalign Go, ClinCheck Web, and some clinical preferences. I think the biggest changes that that impact us is the the, the clean check software as it come as it relates to um, adding and removing attachments and the preferences. So we'll we'll go through that. Uh, I'll I'll take this first slide here, Robin. Uh, it's it's really relates to uh, uh, how the software now displays uh, removing or uh, existing attachments. So if we scan with existing attachments. And we have come to the conclusion or we are in agreement that oftentimes it is quite possible to scan uh, with existing conventional attachments and all the optimized attachments should be removed. So, you know, when, when you start doing that, uh, you get a template with a whole bunch of uh, attachments and the staff may be wondering which ones need to come out and, uh, and, and whatnot. So the new software now uh, indicates with a handpiece uh, the attachments that need to be removed, and there is a little ghost image of that. And obviously, the new attachments are in solid color. So this is a visual representation. If you open the clean check in your clinic bay, uh, that's easy easy to identify. Um, let me go to the next slide here, and Robin can uh, uh, explain that a little better as well. Absolutely. Um, this slide talks about the clean check toolbar and how to turn off, hide, and unhide the removed attachment features. Um, this is kind of groundbreaking for us because in the past I would remove all of the attachments at every refinement and then we'd put all new ones on. Um, essentially if we're using conventional attachments I'm leaving them on for refinements and now I can easily communicate with my team uh, or myself to know which ones to remove, which ones not to remove. If it looks kind of cluttery, I can easily go to the toolbar and uncheck the box and I won't see them anymore. And uh, that's what this slide is all about, but um, very cool. Yeah, the other day I noticed also, if you, you got to be a little bit careful about something. If you occasionally, if you uncheck both, you will actually see your clean check like the old version without any attachments. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's intuitive, but occasionally you might want to check, make sure that you have one of those boxes, boxes checked. Yeah. So uh, another little feature that they, they made sure we could pick our color. So if you change the color of your attachments, uh, the, the old attachments that need to be removed still show in that uh, the color of your choice in a shaded uh, phantom sort of image and the new attachments are more a uh, stronger color uh, and whatever color you know rocks your boat you can you can do it but um neon green slime yeah uh this uh this slide here is uh really straightforward this is just looking at your uh, visualization your staging tab it will show which teeth uh, attachments uh, need to come off prior to the beginning of the the refinement so nothing nothing major but uh now you have an, an up uh, red arrow right at the beginning of the, the staging tab. Let me scroll this down a bit. So uh, there you go. You can have this one, Robin. Yeah, so this is um, the under the treatment tab on your ClinCheck. You could see a, like a very simple diagram that is similar to like a practice management software diagram. It is also printed and in the cases, um, but you can very easily see where IPR is, where attachments are, where they're not. They added the feature, uh, a green button now for um, attachments to replace. So you got to remove first and then re put a new one on. And um, yeah, it's just another visual aid to help our teams uh, not mess up this refinement step. Yeah, okay. Um, in my practice, uh, what we like to do is we just scan this and it's attached to our treatment card. So if we have any questions, we can easily pull that up 
Uh, this new, this new uh, um, uh, visualization also on the treatment tab is, is relating to lingual attachments. So just like any tooth chart, you have the facial surface and uh, on the lower portion here, you have the lingual surface. If you do use lingual attachments, uh, that, that uh, is a way to catch your eye and make sure that you uh, put those attachments on, on, on your patient. Okay. Now yeah, you love this one, so take it. Yeah, so this is my favorite feature about the ClinCheck 5.7 is that now we have a tool that will give us an accurate measurement of overjet. It calculates based on the average overjet of the anterior teeth. So if you have like, uh, you know, number seven and 10 are proclined and number eight and nine are retroclined, it averages the overjet and gives you a number. Um, it shows you where you start with and where you finish. And then if you do a modification in ClinCheck Pro, you'll be able to see your changes and modifications there. You can kind of see where the mouse is hovering. There's initial, a lines final, and then your uh, modification final. And this is great. Um, I like to build in a little bit of overjet into most of my crowded class one cases. Uh, or if you're correcting class two, you'd like to be able to see um, you know, how much of a correction you're making to the overjet overbite relationship. It's cool. Yeah, uh, I think I think Robin is going to record another video showing his clinical preferences and how to enable this tool, right? Uh, yeah, yeah you, you just have to make sure you, you add the overjet overbite tool to your toolbar. So that way uh, it'll be there uh, for you whenever you need it. Um, this uh, this one here, let's see, there you go. Um, this one here is just showing, making sure that you know that it's just showing the single value for the averages, that, that's, that's it. Uh, uh, and, and here it's a, a slide just telling you that if all incisors are missing, uh, you will not get an average. That's pretty, pretty uh, I don't know, redundant, I guess, information, but not, not very helpful. Um, as far as the Invisalign go, um, the old the old uh, display of Invisalign Go product used to uh, show uh, any overcorrections that were built into the treatment, and that can cause some some confusion or uh, room for discussion with the patient if they're seeing overcorrections. So now the the new scrubber stops at the ideal position. Uh, so if in terms of patient communication, I think that helps a lot. Absolutely, and we've been talking about, um, this is our third go around now, so we're, we're <laughs> slides now. Um, uh, we've been talking about Invisalign Go and its implications, and I, I like to use this as an opportunity to say that um, Invisalign Go's product is uh, improving. I'm now optimistic about it, especially for doctors with fewer than 50 cases. Uh, it's a very sophisticated algorithm, a piece of software, a very sophisticated tool at a lower price point, uh, up to 20 aligners, one refinement, and it counts for 500 tier points, or it's like half of a, a, a complete case in the Invisalign tier rewards. And now this tool is really going to be helpful if you're showing patients their Invisalign Go outcomes, and you don't want them to see the overcorrection and ask questions related to overcorrection, you want them to see the ideal outcome. Yeah. On the CleanCheck web uh, interface, uh, they did add uh, the, the, um, the same uh, dialog box that we get from CleanCheck Pro. So when we're submitting a case at, at, on CleanCheck Pro, we do get this dialog to rate the, uh, the CleanCheck. And, uh, and we both agree that you either uh, rate, rate the CleanCheck excellent or hit cancel. Anything, if you rate any, unless you really want to send them some feedback, you're getting consistently a problem with your clean checks, which in which case I would check your preferences. I would start there. But um, if you rate anything below 10, you're going to start to get some, some calls and some emails to kind of figure out what's going on. It goes into, as Robin said, into quality control and it slows down a, a little bit the process. Can I make one comment here? You brought yeah. up a really good point that yeah. we haven't discussed before, and uh, it could be a great topic for another presentation, but if you are getting consistent problems, there are really good ways to fix it, and there is a hierarchy that the techs look at when they uh, receive a case, 
And uh, it's important to know what they, what overrides everything else. And just a, um, I learned this, the, the clinch check that you get um, is determined most by the outcome simulator. If you send an outcome simulator to Invisalign, they, that will override all your clinical preferences, everything. And I didn't know that. That's and cool. and it comes back faster. Oh, it comes back super fast. Yes. Yeah. So if you edit your outcome simulator and then send that to Invisalign for your clin check. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Clinical preferences. Um, there's a there's a little better slide uh, coming uh, ahead, uh, but the majority of the changes are in optimized size of optimized attachments and the uh how how to handle the molar the terminal molar distortion so those are the two new fields uh that you need to go and customize on your on your clinical preferences uh, i particularly really like the the size of the attachments um the, you now get optimized attachments the largest size that fits the teeth uh and i think this is uh going to be a tremendous uh, improvement in in uh, predictability of of treatment because you know we're so used to making changes thinking about the surface area the larger the better but we're missing the the other component of the optimized attachments which is the the relief areas for the teeth to move into so now we're kind of sort of getting both both the best of both worlds we're getting a bigger surface area to push and a bigger release area for the teeth to move into so uh, I, I'm really optimistic and excited about trying this. It's a brand new feature, but uh, you will get that on laterals and knock on wood will help us with those pesky laterals. Um, mm -hmm. Support attachments, uh, root control attachments on uh, upper laterals and then lower canines and lower premolars. So I would highly suggest that you go in and change your uh, clean checks to the largest size that fits. You cannot go wrong with, with that as far as uh, optimized attachments. Here is a, a little bit of a picture just showing comparatively the size of the lateral, uh, new size, larger attachment, the, uh, the, the premolar attachment, so the multiplane and optimized control root attachment, root control attachment, and the, the canine. So you're no longer going to get the two little attachments on the canine uh, for control. You're going to get a single large attachment. Awesome. All right. And uh, I'll let you handle this here. This is the um, slide. This is the clinical preference that has to do with uh, distortions of terminal molars. And uh, now in your clinical preferences, you'll have an option of three, uh, I guess 3.5 uh, different options. And this top one here is my favorite one. It's basically telling Costa Rican techs that uh, if you have a distortion from a, an impression pole on your terminal molar, you just couldn't scan that terminal molar accurately, that um, they will just remove the distorted part, but partially cover the tooth. If you check the box right below that, then they will completely remove the distorted molar, which will uh, potentially give the tooth ability to super erupt and create bite issues. The next box, um, the text in Costa Rica will actually go in and 3D try to recreate that detail, that anatomy, so that you get more coverage on the terminal molar. Um, mm -hmm. If they mess it up, then it won't fit well. And so there's risk that you get a whole case of 20 liners back and uh, have to rescan. Um, the last option is you don't want Costa Rica to do anything except for email you and tell you to take a new impression or scan. So um, I'm going to be checking the top box. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so that's the summary of this this first part. Uh, we are uh, as we have we're having these discussions. I think we're both having some ideas. Uh, and uh, but um, we're going to post this a little later on. And I hope I hope it works out well for everybody. Uh, I'll I'll send you the file a little later on. I think we're good. I'm gonna. Uh, any final remarks there, Robin? <laughs> No, I think it's going to look great. And if you guys like it, uh, let us know. We get updates like this from Invisalign, um, you know, quarterly or so. And this could be a great way to distribute information. Sounds good. We'll talk to you later. Take care, man. You guys, happy Wednesday.